there are two kinds of schools. The kind of school that helps you grow, and the needlessly terrible kind. What? I don't know, this speech strikes me as kind of awkward. Well, you've read the rest of the speech, right? That's just the introductory paragraph. No, it's just the entire tone of the speech kind of feels off. How so? It just doesn't strike me as the kind of speech you give to the people who voted you into office. Well, what kind of speech does this strike you at? Well, it strikes me as more of a megalomaniacal monologue than anything else. To be honest, I can't tell if you wrote this speech to deliver as you publicly thank the voters or to deliver as you snap an innocent animal's neck. This is not a megalomaniacal monologue. Well, you could have fooled me. Do you like being my campaign manager, Scott? Because I can guarantee you that there are at least 20 underclassmen that would kill for your position. No, I love being your campaign manager, but I just- but what? But don't you think it's a bit presumptuous to start writing your victory speech a month before the actual election? It's not presumptuous when your only competition is Harvey Bickle. I mean, does that guy even have the minimum GPA to run? Well, clearly he does because they're letting him. Look, dude, I'm not saying you're not the front runner here, but I don't think it's a good idea to start writing your victory speech a month before the actual election. Do you know what separates a predator from the prey, Scott? Uh, an evolutionary advantage? No. Confidence. This race is not a competition between two men. It's a competition between the weak and the strong. The weak here is Harvey Bickle, of course. That kid doesn't stand a fighting chance. And you could promise putting Coke in the water fountains all you want, but even the simplest voter could smell the odor of his bullcrap from a mile away. The students of this school want a president that they believe that they can trust. And it's just about impossible to trust a kid like Harvey Bickle. Politics is a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Harvey Bickle is a miniature chihuahua. And I'm... Well, I'm a bloodthirsty Rottweiler. What the H-E double hockey sticks is this? Uh, it's the most recent issue of the rag sheet. No. The headline. Uh, the chess club did really well at the county competitions, and? Nobody cares about the chess club. It's not exactly sexy, but it is a really big deal for our school. Oh, yeah. You're absolutely right. The biggest nerd in the entire school, placing fourth in district school championships, is a huge deal for the school. What's next? School Dungeons and Dragon Leagues plays a critical hit in the Cave of Lost Souls. We have a Dungeons and Dragons League? No. If we keep printing stories like this, we will. Okay. Well, what would you rather have us print on the front page? I don't know. Maybe... Maybe something a bit edgier. You do realize that we're just a school paper, meaning that we only report on school matters. 
their interest in school matters. Look, Kate, nothing printed in the school newspaper is ever going to win a Pulitzer. To be honest, the greatest thing the rag sheet's ever gonna do is be decent bathroom reading material. With that kind of attitude. Look, the rag sheet isn't about challenging the status quo. We're all just doing this so we can get a nice little extracurricular to our college applications. We're not trying to push any envelopes. We're not trying to offend any of our what readers. Years? Okay, Kate, you can write any kind of story you want during your own free time, but I can almost guarantee you that it will never get published by the rag sheet. People like you are the reason print journalism is dying. Now, Harvey Bickle isn't the only one campaigning for the presidency, but between you and me, none of the others really matter. Take Cedric Walmack here. Charming, maybe, but the boy's illiterate. He's been held back two years now, and I doubt he even knows how to pronounce the word campaign. And over here, we have Jacqueline Peterson. She's got a pretty face, but that seems to be the only thing going for her. I mean, just look at those dimples. <laughs> Unfortunately for her, her GPA is sadder than a homeless puggle with two legs. Let's see, who else is there? Ah, from the great state of Missouri comes Jackson Longworth. Unfortunately, puberty hasn't been all too kind of poor Jackson here. That baboon is as red-faced as well. Baboon. I've simply got nothing to worry about. These other competitors are nothing but measly little ants, and I'm the boot that's come to squash them. To be truthful, I pity them. In this dog-eat-dog -dog world, if you're not at the top, then there's no chance for you surviving the attack. And it seems none of these other competitors got the memo. Mr. Atterbro? Hey Marcus, what's going on? Oh, I was just on the side of the campus, so I figured I'd stop by, say hello. Well, it's nice to see you too, Marcus. So, I noticed that Skylar put up a few campaign posters around the halls. I wasn't aware that she oh, was yeah. right. Oh yeah, she turned in her paperwork earlier today. Uh, she seems like a pretty strong candidate. Yes. But wasn't the deadline to submit paperwork due yesterday? Marcus, I'm not going to penalize someone for turning in their paperwork a day late. If I did, half the students here would be failing. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I uh, understand what you're saying. But when you're dealing with such a high position of power as president of the Student Body Association, I feel it's important to guarantee that the candidates are punctual 
and can actively meet deadlines. Well, Skylar usually meets her deadlines. With all due respect, sir, she didn't meet this one. Look, Skylar is a perfectly acceptable candidate, and whether you like it or not, I'm going to let her run the race because it is just the American thing to do. I mean, having another candidate in the race will give you a better idea of how this whole democratic system works. Am I right? You're absolutely right, Mr. Radabro. Skylar Morgan is a perfectly qualified candidate, and it just wouldn't be right to not give her the chance to run. We cannot allow Skylar Morgan to run in this election. Oh, come on, she's not that big of a threat. Not that big of a threat, she'll destroy us, Scott. Well, what happened to confidence being the thing that separates the predator from the prey? I've changed my mind. Intelligence, that's what separates a predator from a prey. Either way, you're completely overreacting. You're completely underreacting. What are we going to do? We can't just ask her to drop out of the race. Or can we? They say the way to a man's heart is good cooking, but I earnestly believe that the way to any human being's soul is a hot plate of wings. This place is by far the epitome of barbecue joints in this town. Freshly smoked with some of the finest sauces in this or any town. If I'm gonna ask Skylar to drop out, I need to prove that I'm entirely serious about all of this. There's nothing that serious quite like a hot plate of wings from Johnson's Barbecue Shack. Skylar Morgan. How are you? Pretty good. How about yourself? Oh, no, I'm doing fine. Come on, take a seat. have a plate of the finest wings in the great state of Florida. I'm sorry, I'm a vegetarian. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, more for me, I suppose. <laughs> Would you like something from the salad bar, some Texas toast, or? Oh, don't worry about it. I ate before I came. Okay. So, uh, what did you want to talk about? I grew up in a small town in South Carolina. Really, I did too, what town? Doesn't matter, point is, I came from a town where the greatest aspiration that anyone could hope to achieve was to be manager of a local Kmart. But I knew I was capable of doing more. So I told my father that I didn't want to live in South Carolina anymore. You know what he told me? I don't know what. Of course you don't. <laughs> that was a rhetorical question. He told me that I was meant for great things. When he died in that horrifying lumber mill accident, I, he made sure that I was able to get out of that godforsaken town in South Carolina and move down here to the city of Winters, Palm Beach, Florida. Well, that's uh, really something. Point is, Skylar, my father's last dying wish was for me to achieve great things. Do you know what I think would be a great thing? I don't know what winning the student government election. Well, that'd be a pretty great thing. Indeed it would. But I'm afraid that potentially the only thing stopping me from doing this great thing is you. I don't understand what you're saying. Skylar, being student body president is basically my dream. It's been a goal of mine since as far back as I could remember. And my top choice college, they really want to know that their students are willing to go the extra mile to succeed. And I know that winning this election would prove to them that I'm worth something. I know you want to win this election, but I'm begging you. Drop out of the election so I'll have a guarantee that my dreams will come true. No. Excuse me? Look, I know this means a lot to you, but I'm not gonna just 
drop out because you want to win. I figured you might say that. So, I prepared to make you an offer you can't refuse. How much is in here? Um, about 200. You drop out of the race, and every penny in that envelope will belong to you. I can't do that. Why? What does this election really mean to you? I don't know, but the thought of being bought out just doesn't seem right. I mean, that's practically extortion. Doesn't seem right. Do hmm. you know the story of Icarus, Skylar? Yeah, but I don't see how that's well, relevant. Let's just say you're flying a little too close to the sun. Are you threatening me? I don't know. Am I? I don't know. Are you? You don't drop out of the race. I'll destroy you. And I'll throw you out of the race. I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't be. Whatever. I gotta go meet up with my boyfriend. See you later, Marcus. What I've learned in this line of work is to never disclose information that can harm you. As soon as you feed the dogs, they're only gonna come back for more. You see, Skylar Morgan didn't choose to be put on my platter, but that's just what you get for flying too close to the sun. You told her you were going to destroy her? I didn't see the big deal on what I told You could get kicked out of the race for something like this. I have leverage, Scott. Radabro's not gonna take her word over mine. Well, what are we going to do now? We're going to crush her. How exactly are we supposed to do that? Do you still have that contact in the rag sheet? Are you Marcus? Just enjoy the opera. So I hear you're looking for an edgy story for the rag sheet. I'm sorry, but the student council race is far from edgy. Horse race journalism isn't, but scandal. Is. Please, we all know what Harvey Pickle does in his spare time. I have no concern, even remotely, to Harvey Pickle. Come on, I mean, the only real candidate here is Skylar Morgan, and she's practically a Girl Scout. No one's a Girl Scout. Not even Girl Scouts. What's this? The dirt. How's your campaign going? It's fine. 
fine? I don't want to talk about it. You know you're not going to be accepted if you don't win that election, right? I know, Mom. I know you think you can get in with just a good GPA, but... I know, Mom. Did it work? Yeah. It worked. You wanted to see me, Mr. Atterbro? So, is it a boy or a girl? Excuse me? Oh, come on, you know what I'm asking. I really don't. What the hell? This is a language-free zone. Mr. Atterbro, this isn't true. You can't lie about something like this. Mr. Atterbro, I'm telling you the truth. Skylar, it's right here in the newspaper. It has to be true. Surely you can't be serious. Of course I'm serious. And don't call me Shirley. Oh, for the love of God, don't make an airplane reference right now. So did you call me in here just to ask the gender of my non-existent child, or did you actually want to talk to me about something? Oh, God, I was hoping there would be a better way to segue into this, but... The school administration and I spoke, and we think it would be best if we disqualified you from running in the race. Excuse me? Hey, come on. I hate to say it, but we just can't have a pregnant student body president. I mean, could you imagine the black eye that would give the reputation of this school? Mr. Adderbro, I'm not pregnant. You can lie about all this, this all you want to me, but when you get closer to delivery, but you're, you won't be able to hide anything. The decision's already been made, Skylar. Hey, look at the bright side. Think of the bundle of joy you're bringing into this world. Because she doesn't seem very into it, but... So, do you know who the father is yet? I'm thinking it's her boyfriend, but I don't know about that yet. But yeah. thank you for believing me, because I don't think anyone else would. I have noticed she's getting a little late, you know? Yeah, just a little bit. But I, I really, I really hope it doesn't kick her out of the election. Because th those aren't my intentions. Yeah. It's just, you know, I feel like I, I feel like publishing the truth. I feel like publishing something that should be known. Yeah. So. so, now I bet you're thinking, well, gee, Harvey, why would the United States government be funneling millions of dollars into a secret government project in the North Pole? I, I don't know, Harvey, why? It's simple. They're trying to control the weather. The, the weather? That's right, the weather. Why would the government want to control the weather? Well, Chrissy, you control the weather, you control the world. My name is Gabby. Oh, <laughs> baby, of course it is. Harvey, I, I love it when you forget my name. And I love you. What are you doing here? This is the boys' bathroom. Girls aren't allowed in here. Well, then why is your girlfriend in here? Oh, yeah, that's, that's actually a pretty good point. Can I talk to you? OK. Alone? for student body president. How's that working out for you? Not gonna lie, it's kind of stinking right now. Uh, I've been ranked dead last in the polls since the very beginning of the race. At this point, it's looking like my only two options are to either drop out or suffer humiliating defeat. How would you like to win? Huh? You let me be your campaign manager, and I'll do everything in my power to help you crush Marcus Payne like the despicable roach he is. Well, that's... That's a very enticing offer and all, but what exactly do you want from me? Your absolute, unquestioning loyalty.
What's wrong, Scott? We should be celebrating, not acting like this. I just don't think what we did was right. Oh, not this again. I'm serious, dude. We told a huge lie, a lie that could legitimately make someone's life a living hell. I, I honestly just don't know if the ends justify the means here. Well, Scott, sometimes you need to be bad for the greater good. That's the thing, Marcus. I don't think this is bad for the greater good. I think this is just bad. This has gone way too far. I really don't think I could be your campaign manager anymore. Scott, are you, are you resigning on me? Yeah. I guess I am. This race? It's not a game for those with inflexible morals. <laughs> We're no longer playing a game. We're competing in a war. Now I'm going to level with y'all. You all know that I've had my fair share of struggles with delinquency, with drugs and alcohol. But those days come to an end today. We are no longer stumbling in the darkness here at Wilson Plum Memorial High School. We are basking in the light because we will be like the mighty phoenix and rise from the ashes to usher into a new and exciting chapter of prosperity in this great school, a chapter of rebirth. Of course. The defeated always cling to those who have yet to lose. A decent strategy for the uninitiated and inexperienced. Skyler's plan, however, has an obvious fatal flaw in the form of Harvey Bickle. While taking down Skyler required a fabrication of an elaborate lie. Taking Harvey Bickle down will only require a simple restatement of the truth. Again, politics isn't a game for the weak. It's a brutal competition for those destined to win and those destined to be crushed. Welcome to the 12th annual Wilson Plum Memorial High School Student Body Presidential Debate. I'm Mr. Ratterbro, the Student Government Association Club Sponsor. With me here are the two remaining candidates for student body president, Marcus Payne and Harvey Bickle. Now, let's get to the fun part and begin with opening statements from the two candidates. My fellow Wilson Plum Banana Slugs, as we enter this upcoming year, it's important that we choose a leader who's willing to bend over backwards to do what's right. A leader whose only concern is ensuring the best future for the learning community we call home. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that I'm that leader. Oh, I think we've heard enough of your lies today, Marcus. Excuse me. Don't play dumb with me, Marcus. The students of Wilson Plum Memorial High School deserve a true leader, not a charlatan such as yourself. Charlatan? <laughs> really? Do you even know what that word means? Is that really relevant now? Marcus, we came here to debate the issues, not to study for the SAT. Don't let him distract you from the issues with his fancy speeches and linguistics. He doesn't truly understand the issues that face banana slugs. Well, I've got it all condensed to three C's. Um, it's like your GPA, I don't C imagine. number one, cleanliness. If I'm elected, I vow to have a full dispenser of soap in every bathroom. I don't care if you're a boy or a girl, gay or straight, black or white, because I firmly believe that having a full dispenser of soap is a basic human right. <laughs> Scene number two, crosswords. 
Everyone knows that worksheets are so droll and out of touch with the learning style of today's youth. That's why if I'm elected, I vow to replace every single worksheet and test with the only learning tool that we banana slugs know how to use to truly learn. Crossword puzzles. That's ridiculous. You can't make teachers change their lesson plan. See number three, Coca-Cola. Because that's what we'll be drinking from the water fountains if I'm elected president. Skylar and her puppet want to play dirty. Then I'm just going to have to play dirtier. What do you want, Marcus? I noticed that Skylar Morgan was helping Harvey Bickle with managing his campaign. Yeah, so? We both know that Harvey Bickle is far from qualified to be running for student body president. And his winning would essentially drive this school into the ground. What do you want me to do with this? I want you to print a story that would nip their campaign in the bud before they do some serious damage to this school. Oh, yeah. And Skylar Morgan is going to do some serious damage to this school. Excuse me? I know Skylar's not pregnant. It would be in your best interest to tread lightly. Look, I'm not your mouthpiece anymore. I don't want to get involved in something. Finish your thought. Printing something libelous. Hmm. Look. I'm gonna print a story clearing Skylar's name. No one deserves to go through hell like that. Well, I believe that you should do what you feel is right. All right. Well, good luck with your campaign, I guess. You did the right thing, Marcus. Marcus? It wasn't the right thing to do. You know in your heart that it was. I might have killed someone over the student council election, and you're telling me I did the right thing? You didn't kill her over the student council election. You killed her for your future. She would have gutted you like a sheep, and at that point, what could you have done to clear your name? I don't know. That's what I thought. You've gone through so much to get to this point, Marcus. You can't just throw it all away over something like this. You're going to be president one day, and you can't just throw it all away over the thing that was necessary to do. But, Mom, I... You're either in this at 100% or you're not in this at all. Do you understand? Yeah. I understand.
God, Marcus. What are you doing? Where's Mr. Ratterbro? Marcus. Cut the crap, Marcus. Where's Mr. Ratterbro? Mr. Ratterbro has briefly stepped out to get himself a cup of coffee. At the moment, it's just the three of us. Well, then we'll just come back when Ratterbro gets here. Don't leave yet. You worthless junkie. Excuse me? You heard what I said. You worthless piece of scum. I'm far from worthless, Marcus. Oh, really? Then what word would you use to describe a sad, sad boy that does nothing all day except skip class and do drugs? Don't listen to him, Harvey. Oh, come on. You know I went clean a long time ago. Sure you did. You shut up! You <laughs> Harvey, no. What's wrong? You can't make your own decisions without having to be manipulated by Skylar to make the right ones? I'm perfectly capable of making my own decisions. What seems to me is you're being a mindless puppet. That's it! Sweet mother of Ronald Reagan! What the AT double hockey sticks is going on here? Oh my God, Harvey, I thought you were on the straight and narrow. I... You know what? I don't even want to hear it. I'm taking you straight down to the principal's office. I'm sorry. Students, it is my honor to be standing here today to introduce a great man, a visionary. It all started back in 2012 when a certain individual came walking into my room. And on that fine August day, I was taken aback by this young man who exuded confidence and, and leadership. He definitely is a man destined to lead others. He is definitely going to be somebody that we said, I knew him when. Ladies and gentlemen, you're amongst greatness. He is hey Marcus. what we're looking for in a young person uh, today. Hey, Freddie. <laughs> Congratulations. Kill it out there. Why, thank you. I'll see you in Mr. Kurt's class tomorrow, all right? Okie dokie. We, will say, we were there then. I went to high school with him. He's a great young man, and I'm certain that he will be the person to lead you into your next school year. You're 2015, 2016 student body president, Marcus Payne. Thank you. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment of silence for a valued member of our student body who tragically passed away after a recent accident in the stairwell, Kate Rooney. She was a bright and talented young woman with a strong moral compass. And I think we should take a moment of silence to honor her memory. Now let me say that it's an honor and a privilege to be standing before you as your president for the 2015-2016 school year. I know that this election has been a hectic one, to say it the least. But I promise you that I will do everything in my power to make this year our greatest year yet. Of course, these are all just words. The office of the student body president is a charade. <laughs> one that's sole purpose essentially boils down to Choosing the theme of the homecoming dance and arranging this year's fundraiser. <laughs> but that charade of an office isn't just a title. 
It's a symbol. A symbol that indicates that I'm willing to do everything that it takes to do what I believe is necessary. Because in this doggy -dog, dog world, you can't be a little chihuahua. You have to be a bloodthirsty Rottweiler. You see, what I believe is that we have a choice. You can either be a shark or you could be the one left in the water to bleed. I know which one I'd rather be. Don't you? God bless. Class of 2016! Seven C's, so cut circulation, cleavers, chop clavicle bones. But you get to have the phone home, cause I need space for them to ship my trophy. Loki, like Loki, mischief managed. I break all ten commandments when I hit the canvas. Now give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. How I'll live for these little kitties, better sit me down. If the tries and rams me, I'ma be like Ramsey in the kitchen. Turn the around. Give it to me, give it to me, give it to me now. Give it to me, give it to me, give it to me now. Give it to me, give it to me, give it to me now. Give it to me, give it to me now. Give it to me, I want my prize. Just give it to me. Pushing daisies, they did with the good to save me, but I don't need friends. Never had those. Spend the weekends before up in all my rap flows. Life stinks when they call you an oh, but I smell jealousy, envy is a felony. That's no way to treat the future king. They call me a pathological liar, logic pro buyer. You ain't got no logic, bro. Roy, out of your flow. I'm a dope rhymer. Uh, the father don't kind of player in a game that's full of flames, and I'm getting tips off of those timers. Tell them the new kid is falling those flies now. Give it to me. Give it to me, you can never have a lie. Just give it to me, you can never have a lie. Just give it to me, you can never have a lie. Just give it to me, you can never have a lie. Just give it to me, you can never have a lie. Just give it to me, you can never have a lie. Just give it to me, you can never have